It's mating season. It's spring. <laughs> it's springtime. Things are warming up. Dicks are going up. And people be fucking. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Why did I do that? That hurt. And to kick off mating season, if I'm going to react to any bartender, of course it's going to be Greg from How to Drink. <laughs> you guys love when I react to How to Drink videos. I think they're the most requested videos I get when it comes to reactions. And they just happen to have a video called 10 Best Drinks for Spring. And guess what it is? Spring. This is probably gonna be the last How to Drink video I react to for a minute just because I've tried Greg's cocktails, I've pitted him against other bartenders, and now I'm reacting to one of his videos. Let's give Greg a break. <laughs> I don't want him to think. I'm a mooch, but I am interested to see if me and Greg have the same kind of taste when it comes to spring cocktails, or if he does things a way that I would. Because if he does, this might be our first fight. We might have beef. And there's a dick joke there somewhere, but we're not gonna do it. Before we start, let me take this moment to remind you guys to subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time I make a new video. I'm a globally disgraced bartender trying to make the world better one cocktail at a time. I also spiral a lot and don't know how to handle my emotions, but that's just a bonus. <laughs> so what makes a good cocktail for spring? You know, I find that kind of tough to define, but also I bet you know what I mean, right? Maybe it's uh, one of those things where it's easier to start by defining what it is. I wanna guess, I wanna guess. Can I guess? Can't, who am I talking to? There's no one here. A good spring cocktail, what it isn't is hot, thick, and strong. And when I think of spring cocktails, I think of something that is light, refreshing, maybe a lot of citrus, berry flavors, floral flavors. Maybe I'll make some floral drink videos this month. I could definitely do something with Aperol, Campari, Saint Germain. Let me know in the comments if you guys would like that. So I don't think a spring drink is hot or terrifically spirit forward. Um, and I don't think it's tiki. I think a drink- What is tiki? What is tiki? Is that like coconuts? <laughs> is that like tropical? Is that what- is that what tiki means? And I don't think it's tiki. I think a drink of spring would feature fresh ingredients, bright flavors, and be... Am I a spring cocktail? I'm fresh sometimes. <laughs> I'm bright, I have a bright personality. And easy street, <laughs> bitch, you better believe it. I'm gonna break this table. <laughs> I think probably the first thing that comes to mind when I shout the drinks of spring into the void that exists behind my eyes is an Aperol spritz, and I'm probably pronouncing April. Aperol. <laughs> Aperol? What? Greg, are we fighting? <laughs> My eyes is an Aperol spritz, and I'm probably pronouncing Aperol incorrectly. All of Europe right now is sniggering. <laughs> Aperol. All of Europe and me. <laughs> Two things me and all of Europe have in common. We're both snickering at that, and we're uncircumcised. I couldn't even say it, because it's not true. I'm just lying. Rocket fuel. I'm feeling a bit parched, so why don't I make one of these right away? Let me try to guess. <laughs> An Aperol spritz. You got two parts Aperol, three parts champagne or Prosecco. I don't care whatever you have in your house. And one part soda water. Garnish with an orange peel, you're good to go. Through the Aperol spritz, Aperol spritz, Aperol? Is it Aperol? Aperol? Aperol. <laughs> Wait, no, Aperol. I'm saying it wrong now. <laughs> uh, these are commonly built in a balloon glass or maybe a snifter if you like something. <laughs> I want to make a snifter joke referring to my butthole, but that's too many dicks and butt jokes this early in this video. It's me fine. Crack some ice into your glass. This production quality is pissing me off because <laughs> it's so good. My ice machine could never. <laughs> it's like, do you ever see a really pretty person and you think, go fuck yourself just because they're so pretty? Like, you're not mad. You're just like, it's rude for you to be that pretty. That's how I feel when I watch these videos. Like, can you stop being so fucking rude with your production values? Some of us are poor and lazy. Two ounces of Aperol. Aperol, I'm gonna pronounce it. We're on a good train. Most people at this point just top it up. N most people are wrong. <laughs> how do you know how to make this so well, Michael? Funny you ask. I used to steal these from my bar in New York City all the time. I would just drink these all day while I was supposed to be working and be lit. <laughs> Michael, what got you into bartending in the first place? I found a way to make so much money just getting drunk all day. And I'm still doing it to this day. <laughs> Um, and you could eyeball three ounces or just know where three ounces are. I am gonna measure. I'm just gonna measure it somewhat pedantically. That's how, yeah, that's. 
You know, I'm not gonna yell at him about measuring. We all know how I feel. Do I think Greg needs to measure? No. Do I think he has the ability to just eyeball it? Yes, he just said that. Why is this so fucking dark? This motherfucker's over here doing slow-mo shots. I can't even light the fucking video. Two ounces of like club soda or seltzer. Two ounces? Is that, have I been doing it wrong? <laughs> it's not a drink of very powerful, strong flavor. Maybe this is why I don't like to measure <laughs> because I don't actually know the measurement. I just remember memorizing two, three, one for this cocktail. <laughs> and I used to drink them all the time and I loved them. So if I was making it wrong, then I make a really good wrong cocktail. <laughs> I tend to measure things on this show because, you know, it's an informational show, ostensibly, um, and garnish. And I don't because I represent nothing but mistakes. <laughs> According to my parents, I started as a mistake, and I want to keep that going. And then garnish with an orange wheel. Beautiful. There you go. Nice spritz. Look how sexy that is. Ugh, I want it in my mouth. The drink looks good too. I don't like doing this. I don't like doing this because he's a nice person. <laughs> no more dirty jokes. No more dirty jokes. Can we do a Mike MGTV video? That doesn't have dirty jokes. <laughs> I want to be highbrow humor. I could be class. I could be this. April was sitting large. You better put that fucking spoon away. You better, you better put that fucking spoon away. It's a little bit bitter, but just like me. I would go with a spritz over the Pim's cup, but not everything is everyone's cup of tea. I'm told that the way to do these is really in a pitcher, and as you refill the pitcher through the- What is a Pitmas cup? What is a Pitmas cup? What's going on in the UK? <laughs> I'm told that the way to do these is really in a pitcher, and as you refill the pitcher through the day. There's a lot of education. <laughs> when you say a lot of smart things, it starts to turn off. A thin ribbon of cucumber, maybe some sliced apples, sliced strawberry, stuffed into a glass or pitcher with two ounces of Pims, which is basically a liqueur built from gin. Uh, what is Pims? Am I the worst? What is Pims? And four ounces of lemon lime soda. Not my favorite, but they- Is lemon lime Sprite? <laughs> Can we all just start saying Sprite or am I like an ignorant American? But if I were and you offered me a Pims cup, uh, I would say, yes, sir, thank you very much. I will- If someone offered me a Pims cup, I don't know what I would say. Only because I don't think I would know what it is. I've never heard of this. It sounds good. Any cocktail that requires me to peel more than one thing, the answer is no. <laughs> so this is a drink I do adore. It's a garden in a glass. It is the Sherry Cobbler. It is positively ancient by cocktail standards going back to the early 1800s and it is- I've heard of this. Have I ever made it? No. Have I ever made this or am I thinking of cherry cobbler? Am I just thinking of pie? <laughs> a half an ounce of simple or gums here, four ounces of Amontillado sherry, Lestau is fine here. Garnish it with everything you've got. Um, like just throw the kitchen sink at it. Berries, oranges, mint, whatever. That looks amazing. <laughs> it's a lot thrown at me at once. I haven't had that much coming at my face in a- I said we weren't gonna do this. Loves it mainly because I don't really know what to say. I'm kind of overwhelmed. So a similar drink in both its dependence on crushed ice and its ancientness is the mint julep, the official drink of the Kentucky Derby, which always falls in spring. Mint juleps. It's got mint in it. I know that. I want to know. I want to guess. I want to pretend like I know how to make this. Um, is it a mint julep? Just some kind of whiskey. Mojito. A julep is literally like a whiskey version of a mojito, right? I think I'm doing it smart. I think I know what I'm talking about. Excuse me. <laughs> the julep has a long history that I explore a bit in my episode on it, um, which there's a link for down there. Over its history, it's been made with a variety. I didn't study for this test. <laughs> I don't have, I need a study guide. I cheated in every single one of my history classes, okay? Don't ever come up to me and ask me where a drink came from or what the history is. Because the only kind of history I'm gonna be able to refer to is my personal history. I'm like, this tequila soda goes back to 2007 when I made a lot of mistakes. Let me read you. I used Buffalo Trace back when I shot this one. Uh, it's still a perfect choice. But I gotta say, my beloved old granddad bottle and bottle. How do you make it? And why is there a whole tree of mint in that? Wait, go back. I used Buffalo Trace back then. There is a whole tree of mint in there. <laughs> That's a whole fucking sprout. Damn. <laughs> I've been putting like twigs <laughs> in this shit. Mint juleps are, are both easy to over sweeten, but they do need to be sweet. If you've ever had like a, chimp, a cheap mint julep in New Orleans or something like that, you've probably had a glass of syrup. I know I have and hated it. See, you don't like overly sweet cocktails. Cocktails being overly sweet ruins them. <laughs> this is one thing that Greg and I definitely have in common. We both share that same opinion. You can be sweet, 
just not too sweet. I keep the simple syrup in them to about a half an ounce. I actually like a couple of dashes of Angostura bitters in mine, which is not necessarily a standard choice, but possibly a historic choice you are free to ignore. I muddle the mint. Perfect. That measurement is perfect to have a sweet cocktail, but anything more than that can overpower it and ruin the whole thing. I go three ounces of bourbon uh, with crushed ice, stir or swizzle that a bit, finish with more ice, garnish it with as much mint as you can stand, and put your feet up because you're in julep town. Okay, it's, it's a whiskey mojito. <laughs> or is a mojito just a rum julep? This is not for me to decide. In spring, it's, it's a modern classic. It is the Gordon's Cup from the now long gone milk and honey, which- Gordon's Cup? What? Do I suck? I No, I don't like this. I was, I was fully prepared to watch this video and be like, look at me and Greg knowing the same thing. Spring cocktails, bitch, I got spring cocktails. Look at us sharing information and like talking about how to make them better. I'm just sitting here learning. I'm gonna break this table. I have yet to meet somebody who doesn't like this drink um, or it's breakfast version the with hot sauce, the Gordon's breakfast. Hot sauce? Okay, I might be the first. <laughs> What's in it? Let me, let me see what it is first. Shake the lime and the cucumber and three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, two ounces of London dry together. Cucumber, lime, gin, so far, down. Three fourths of an ounce of simple syrup is a little bit much, but that's easily changed. We don't have to fight over it. Uh, shake all of that together and strain it into a double old fashioned over rocks. Wouldn't you want to muddle the cucumber in order to really get like the flavors? Wouldn't you? Because if you just shake the cucumber and then you strain it, is it fully gonna flip? Greg, am I doing a smart? I'm trying so hard. I'm trying so hard to contribute some information here because this is all I plan to do today. And I can't just sit here and watch the video. <laughs> then add a few more cucumber wheels for garnish, a little kosher salt and black pepper. Oh, the kosher salt's gonna bring out the flavors, but I would have muddled it. Whether or not that would be better, I'm gonna say that that's what I would do different because I wanna be somebody who helped. I'm done being the teacher's aide. I want my own class. I don't think I would like that with the hot sauce. I think I'll pass it with the hot sauce. <laughs> but other than that, I think it sounds amazing. Uh, another neo-classic from the New York bar scene is Audrey Saunders's Earl Grey Martini. Uh, to make this drink, you will need to make an Earl Grey tea infused gin. Uh, and the That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. <laughs> I want to make these though. I have never heard of, I mean, I've heard of an Earl Grey Martini. Have I ever made one? No. Can I have an Earl Grey martini? You can have a foot up your ass. I hope people don't think I'm ever trying to like argue the fact that I'm a good bartender. I'm a lazy little fuck who just wanted to get paid to be drunk. Let's get that very straight. But I do want to make these cocktails. I want to make only the ones that I've never heard of. So if this video gets 4,000 likes, I will do that. If you're trying to replicate the Pegu Club experience note for note, I'm told that they use Tanqueray. I used four. He's spinning so much knowledge and I have no idea what the fuck is going on. You ever do that thing where you like, you read pages and then realize that you don't understand anything you've just read so you gotta go back and do it again? That's what's going on with me in this video. I feel like I've watched 12 minutes and 58 seconds and I didn't retain a single thing. <laughs> this video is a giant ad for attention deficit disorder. Um, this drink was invented to be a crowd pleasing show. All that work for that little thing you got me so fucked up. You got me so fucked up because I won't be fucked up. Is it delicious? Probably. But I don't wanna! I'm just throwing a tantrum. Shut up! I made this, um, and I, I stand by this, with three mint leaves. Um, then a quarter ounce of simple syrup. He came up with this drink recipe himself. Like, he just put this together. I made a pink fish bowl, and I was so impressed. <laughs> I just recently learned that it's pronounced Sangamen. Sangamen. That's what I've been told. It's pronounced Sandelman. Who the fuck pronounces Saint Germain Sandelman? If I learn one more thing in this video that I'm doing wrong, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, when I, I was just noodling around when I came up with this. So it was one of those things where like, I didn't. I'm tired. <laughs> but it works great. Dry shake. Oh, I know why you do that. I know this. I learned this in one of my videos before. You always do a dry shake when it comes to egg white drinks because if you change the temperature, it's gonna do something that you don't want it to do. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't raise my hand. Did I, can I get participation credit? Mint buds. You can take one of these guys. And just put that right in the middle. Look at that. <laughs> 
What am I doing? Why did I decide? Why did I want to do this? Did, it, did I think it would make me feel good? <laughs> did I really think I was gonna watch this video and be like, oh yeah, me and Greg, we're on par. <laughs> I just, I want to, I want to quit. Um, and there it is, the gin whisper. Ooh, the he calls it a gin whisper. Do you remember when I named a cocktail? Ah! <laughs> I named it a sound. It looked so stupid. I named it a sound. Uh, you get yourself a shaker. You get some super fine sugar. You get a whole line, you cut it into eighths. You muddle that with some sugar. You, you take two ounces of cachaça, cachaça, cachaça. It's a little hard to have that. What the fuck is cachaça? What is this? What is this? Why do I feel like Jack Skellington in The Nightmare Before Christmas? I really like Nova Fogo. Shake that up and open pour it into a rocks class. And what I say- I This is a vocabulary lesson now. This is a full vocabulary lesson. Where's the sun going? I'm done. I'm not done. No. I'm pissed. Cachaça? The hell is cachaça? Welcome to the video where Michael has a wake up call. I refuse to be outdone. I'm going to make a video where I make these fucking cocktails and I'm going to make them better. Or at least I'm going to break everything in my apartment until I do. But make sure to let me know in the comments if you want to see me do that. And be sure to like this video because I need to be able to afford to buy the ingredients. <laughs> that was bullshit. <laughs> I quit. Like, comment, subscribe. I have a podcast with Mac. Link in the description below. I have Cameo. It's all down there. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Thank you guys for watching. As always, my name is Mike of GTV, and you're fucking welcome. Bye.